Hey, man. Hey, man. Good, Good to see you. Nice to see you. You get stuck on 101? Uh, yeah, uh, several times, many times. <laughs> Why are you all so far back? <laughs> come, come in. Come in. Everybody in the getting a million dollars in funding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's under your chair. Thank you for there's, your patience there's waiting There's a term sheet me. under your chair. You know, I was in ed tech for a long time, so it's like the teacher thing. It's like you gotta be up front. Only the bad kids sitting back. Hmm? How much did you tell her? I didn't tell anything. I sat in the back, by the way. I did too. Yeah. But I was definitely one of the bad kids. <laughs> cool. Well, glad you could make it. Great to see you. Good to see you, so, too. So first of all, congratulations on the new role. Thank you. You've been involved in Y Combinator for, what, seven or eight years? Yeah. So it's, you're not new to Y Combinator, but it's, it's a new role. Um, so what are you most proud about with Y Combinator? Is it the, all the really successful companies like Airbnb and Dropbox that came out, of found, uh, came out of YC? Is it the way that Y Combinator has supported founders in perhaps different ways than the funding ecosystem supported founders before YC, or, or is it something entirely different? Well, I think that's part of it. Um, I think YC was founded with a particular ethos, which is, um, and this, this may be you know, one of those things where you look in retrospect and you, you assign all sorts of genius to why the founders did it. And PG has been kind of explicit about this with me. Um, so he, he was trying to, to create a new kind of VC that funded startups synchronously as opposed to asynchronously. Most, most VCs go out searching and find one startup at a time and one startup at a time and fund them, whereas YC says, come, come all at once and then we'll fund you and we'll work with you for somewhere and we'll standardize all the documents so we can do it all consistently. But I think there was an underlying thing there which I think was really cool and, and, and really deep and, um, and required real foresight, which was that which was that most innovation, most great companies in the future would be based around technology and namely software. And yet the people who knew that software the best were not at the center of that innovation. They were almost an afterthought. You had, you had sales people or people with business degrees going and starting these companies and creating a technical team, whereas the people who knew how to build technology, who understood it best, were really not at the center, and that's what Paul did. He put them at the center, and that changed the way people think about startups, especially engineers and technical people, about what they could do. I'm, I'm especially proud of the fact that we've kept to that. There's, there's another aspect, which is, which is one of the reasons I decided to take on the role, which, which is more fundamental to me, which is I think we actually really believe that you know, our motto is make something people want, that by doing that, we can actually make a better world that you, know, you won't always be right on, but that if you actually make people's lives better by making something they want, whether, whether it's consumers or businesses, then things will get better over time. And I, I still believe that that's our mission, that we stick to that more than not, that when we look at the companies that we accept, we actually care about that, and I'm really proud of that. So you view YC as something that made the technologist founder more the, the center uh, of, of the process starting the companies that had not ex been Not the to the exclusion, but that they, you know, uh, I say this all the time to founders, it's, you know, who, who have a great idea. Do you have someone on your team who can build what you think you want to build? And if the answer is no, my question is, why? Like, what makes you think? What, what's going to improve the probability that you're successful more than having someone who's right there at the beginning iterating with you, trying to figure out how to get that you know, proverbial product market fit? Well, you and I both have a computer science background, so obviously you could say we have a, both, we have a bias. We were engineers who became entrepreneurs who obviously yeah. think it's pretty weird if three people with MBAs and no engineers come to us trying to build a software business. Yeah. Um, I kind of think it's, you know, be like, if I had a great idea for a restaurant, I'm like, you know, I can't cook, and I've never run a restaurant, but I have an idea for a it restaurant. It seems I weird like now, but that was more typical than not, I think, in the past. But it does seem weird now, and it does seem, if, if I'm going to bet on a startup with, a, with, with three people who don't know how to build and, and, you know, three people who do, you know where I'm going to put my money. You won't always be right. You're never always right in this business. It's impossible, but boy, more often than not. Right. So that's the ethos that PG founded, YC, that's the way it is today, and obviously that's still something that's very akin to you know, your background. So that's something you probably 
last thing you want to do would be change that. So is there anything you want to change about YC now that you're the CEO of YC, or, or, is, or do you think YC is great as it is and, and just keep going the same way? Yeah, I've been asked a lot, like, what am I going to change? And I've been in the job for two weeks, so everything, right? Uh, and mostly I'm punting on that question. I think that uh, during Sam's tenure, YC did a lot of great stuff and, um, and grew a lot. Uh, when I started at YC, we were funding maybe 40 companies a batch, and now we're funding over 200. And that's a pretty big change. Right. Uh, I don't, uh, what, what I want to focus on is making sure that the, the, the product that, that, that is ours, that, the, that we deliver to our founders, remains a great product. That the founders who come through YC leave thinking that that was a transformative or incredibly impactful experience for them. But and the I want to focus has got to be different today. And, and imagine on one it's hand It's not as different as you hand, might think. There's it more, is. maybe there's more technology, there's the community is even bigger than it was, uh, but it uh, can't be the same as when it was when it was It's not the gone. same, but you know, we we well one of the things we've done is we shard YC. So so YC with 200 companies is four groups of 50 companies. And we try to replicate the personal attention Are those that groups thematic? Do, do like the biotech companies go in one and the software companies go in a different they're one, loosely, or are they all mixed together? They're loosely thematic. They're loosely thematic. Yeah. So the founders... So the bio companies do tend to be together, the ed so tech companies four? tend to be together. There's four. So it's like Hogwarts. Yeah, they're all, they're all called Ravenclaw. No, yeah. they're not. So the founders are going to be in the group that's, that's with There's the other founders. There's a sorting hat, and then we put them, right. yeah. And the founders are probably going to be in the group that has other founders most going through a similar The number one rule that puts you in a group is that the interview track you went for, the, the, the group partner was in that track. And that's somewhat organized by vertical, but not completely. So that's why it's loosely organized. We so tend to put the bio companies. The bio companies especially tend to be together because they tend to help each other. So at the time of the interview, you're assigning a partner that you think is actually qualified to judge that company at that point. Most qualified. So, so in the, I mean, in the early days, I remember going to YC Demo Day at the little office on like in Pioneer. There were only like 20 companies. And then it got bigger and bigger. Then it was here. To, and then we're still on Pioneer, right. by the way. But, but then, and then for the first time ever, Demo Day was in San Francisco, 200 plus companies. So is 200? Is it? Is that too big? Do you want? Do you want to go back more towards a smaller thing? Do you want? Is it going to get even bigger, or is 200 the perfect number? Like it, it, 200 was a lot. I mean, it was, two, it was more than 200, right? It was 200 and... 205. 205. But the number that's in a batch doesn't quite match up with the number that are a demo day because we actually don't force you to present at the demo day that's, that's, that's associated with your batch. You can actually defer if you're not ready for whatever reason. So there's companies that come back and companies that defer. So, but on the order of 200, um, what I think we've discovered is that 200 is not too big. It's not too big. It's not too big. Uh, we have no reason to believe that all of the we grew we grew a lot from the um, summer of 2018 to the winter of 2019. We grew about 30 percent, which is one of the largest single batch to batch growths we have ever had. And the reason that happened was because startup school in the summer of 2018 successfully funneled a lot of really quality applications. So into startup the school is an online course to teach MOOC, people about right. I don't know if anybody knows it. Anybody can, go, can use it for free, right? Yeah. It's online, free, teaches you about startups. And, and how many people, and anybody can do it, right? Anybody can do it. And, and how many people a year go through startup school? Um, I'll talk about it in terms of companies. So 15,000 companies signed up to actually take the course and 12,000 to audit it. Um, Actually, there's, uh, some of you guys might know the, the kind of funny story, you know, funny story of what happened. So People were accidentally accepted, right? Well, sort of, yes. Uh, what happened was, so <laughs> it's, a real, it's a real online course. You're assigned an advisor, and we lined up about 150 advisors. Each one would do somewhat less than 30 companies. So we could take about 4,000 companies to actually take the course, send monthly updates. And unfortunately, that meant we had to turn down 11,000 and say, you, well, you can still take the course, <laughs> but you have to audit it. You're not really taking the course. And unfortunately, due to a software bug, we told the 11,000 they were in, and we told the 4,000 they were out, <laughs> which was bad. And we found out about this during demo day of you know, summer 2018 demo day. So in the end, we decided we were going to take all of them. So we had 15,000 companies start in the course. Um, and it, is that set a precedent? Will, there all, will you let in 15,000? We'll, we'll let in everyone who wants from now on. 
everyone who wants to be part of it. Yeah, are we allowed to take questions, John? Uh, questions. Are we going to take questions? Uh, where's where's There's the a question now? right there. Where sure. Is the engineer who screwed up still working at YC? So the question is, is the engineer still at YC? No. But that's not why. In fact, the, the way, like, like, you know, I, I gave him a hug and said, that's the best mistake you've ever made. So um, it was like, you know, anyone can, this is, uh, it, it, was, it was a pretty bad mistake. He's actually a good guy. And he went, he went off because he's a crypto guy, and he wanted to do crypto. And so if you want to do crypto, you ought to go to crypto, right? Everyone agrees with that, right? So you ought to go. So that's why. But no, uh, there, there was no, there, there was no uh, recriminations. I, I think if you make really terrible mistakes, Frequently, but he was like on it. He, you know, he was remorseful, and he did everything he could to work to make the fifteen thousand work, and he worked really hard for that. So he was, it was all, it was all good. So the other big change, in addition to a, a bigger number of companies, is the more is the diversity in terms of the types of industry re represented. So it's not just software and internet. Now there's the last demo day. There was a, literally a flying motorcycle company. There, uh, there's been companies curing cancer. There's all these different kinds of companies. How has that gone? And you know, you. So you asked me one of the things I, I'm proud about, and uh, one thing I left out is, that, you know, we didn't know how uh, applicable our advice was going to be to startups across different verticals. But I think one of the things that has has really worked is that we can successfully give advice to companies like Ginkgo BioWorks that are creating uh, bacteria that, you know, create new, per that, that, that they're, where, where, where their excretions are perfume, right? And we can significantly help companies like Boom, which is creating a new supersonic jet, or Helion that's trying to create a nuclear reactor, as well as companies that are in the consumer internet space. So it just turns out that there's enough commonality around startups and that we found this place in there that really works and that we can add what we believe, and the founders, I think, will represent the significant value throughout that spectrum. Are the companies that have come through that are doing these more esoteric things like airplanes and, and things like that, are they doing as well as the, the more traditional IT companies? Are there enough investors who attend YC Demo Day that understand and invest in those types of companies? I would say it's too early to tell, but it is, it is true that some of those companies are amongst, we, we, we have funded on the order of 18 billion that currently are valued at, over a billion dollars, and there are significant hard tech companies in that, uh, or biotech companies in that space, and I think there'll be more. So, so far, uh, I, I, I don't know how to really measure as well, except over, you know, the, the time scales here are so large that it's, it, it's you know, ask me in 10 years, mm. but it looks pretty good so far. Cool. So you had a company, We're Lala. We're gonna do more. So you had a company, Lala, that you sold to Apple that was like a, a music thing predating Spotify. It was really cool, too. To, if, there, if there are people really? in the audience today that they're not working on a supersonic airplane, but they're, they're working on a consumer uh, product, what's your take on, on the, the viability and landscape and opportunities for those type of companies today? And this is not just about YC, but in general, like, it seems like there's less of those at YC, and part of that is because you've got more... There's more, but maybe less as a percent. Right, but there's all this other kind of cool stuff, but also it seems like... The, it, there, it seems in general there hasn't been a breakout consumer company in a while. Is that, your, is that your take on things? Do you think that the companies going through YC that are trying to do consumer stuff are having a harder time now than 10 years ago? Or is, is, what's YC's sort of opinion on those types of companies? Um, I'm just trying to think of uh, going through in my mind whether there's sort of breakout consumer companies. It is true that the consumer space is worked over, and it's complicated. I actually don't necessarily believe there's less opportunity there. It's just, you, um, you know, the low-hanging fruit is probably um, uh, not Taking so already? low anymore. Anything that's, that's true forever or just um, temporarily? You know, I, I try to stay away from broad generalizations about about the environment changing really radically. Like, I think, I think there's going to be, you know, AR and VR will be a thing. They really will. And all of a sudden, there'll be this whole new domain that people can jump on, where you can't really jump on it now. And when that, that 
sort of inflection point hits, there'll be a ton of opportunity. And you know, I think, I do think that, that wearables of various kinds and, and maybe even crypto will come back and all of a sudden there'll be a lot of opportunity, even in the consumer space. So I, I, don't, I don't know, I, I, I think that the, the main lesson of the last 20 years is that change is accelerating and that change creates opportunity and that you just have to be ready for the change and so if you're lucky and ready when that happens then you can jump on it. I sort of doubt that we're gonna look back and say, oh, oh gosh, you know, 2019, that was the end of you know, new consumer opportunities. Like you know, 10 years ago, no more, no more opportunities in communications, right? Or what's happened, Slack, and you know, and so it's like you know, I, I so I, I would argue that watch for the change and watch for things happening, and, and opportunities will create will be created. Cool. So when we started Founders Den, I remember we had companies that would sort of graduate from YC and come to Founders Den, like like Docker. And now there's been times where I've had we've had companies at Founders Den, and then six months later I see them at YC because it does seem like there's some companies in YC that are that are further along. For and sure. there was the attempt, there was going to be a YC Fellows program that maybe that would be where the companies that were earlier and then that was shelved. I, I'm kind of wondering, like, what's your take on this? Because, like, I'm wondering, like, if, if Justin Kahn or Drew House or one of those guys was applying to YC today, at the stage they were when they originally got in years ago, like, would, the, would, would somebody like that get into YC today? Yeah, you know, like, our, 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 ultimate, our ultimate paranoia is if, you know, if... Brian Chesky and Joe and Nate come to, were to come to YC today as Airbnb, would we accept them? Would we have so that's something the you about. capacity, the, the, the vision to believe in those founders? And we do explicit things. Don Caldwell, who runs our admissions, is awesome about this. He, and he, he, you know, he forces us to think hard about the set of founders that, that, um, that are more likely to be transformative and to build truly scalable companies. And so it is difficult because if you have this juxtaposition of two companies you're, you're reading an application for interviewing, one of which has a million dollar run rate and another which is two 21 years old or three 21 years old out of, out of school with some cool, cool, crazy idea, which should you fund? And we try to we try hard to convince ourselves that no, it's the, it's, the, it's the young kids who have some crazy idea, or not so young, it doesn't matter, but they have a crazy idea and they've got nothing. But you must believe something about them and their past and their, their quality that they're going to do it. Like the, the kids from Brex are a good example of that, right? These are, these are 21 years old of Brazil who came, again, with a pretty lousy idea to YC in VR. And now it's worth two billion? And now it's, you know, a, a, you know, you know God knows what, what, so, the, that, what, the, what the trajectory So when they entered YC, like. it was not for the credit card. It was for a VR idea. And you accepted them for the VR idea, and then during the program they pivoted to the credit card. Wow. Wow, right. And, and the VR idea, was it a good idea? Do you... I don't remember. What, what, is the, the, what is the craziest? I think, not, I think not. I think we explicitly said, this seems like a bad idea, but these guys seem great. They had already, they had already had an, they had started a company when they were 14, they like, had already had an exit, they were just, they were just like, fun, great founders, just great, especially early on, if you worry too much about the idea, you're going to, you're going to be wrong, because, What's you know, the craziest idea that you remember sitting in on a pitch at YC that you just thought was the most ridiculous thing you'd ever heard? And that we still funded? Uh, Either <laughs> one that you one that you didn't and one that you did. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to come up with something on short notice. The crazy. Is there something that you thought was actually horrible and YC did not accept them, and then later they won, went on to great success? Um, there was this company that this no, this is not one of those examples. Uh, we we've actually, uh, I mean, we 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 missed SendGrid, but we actually have relatively few obvious misses. Uh, where, other than that, where they've gone on to become a, a giant company. Um, there was this company that was a music company, and I always, because I, I know too much, I always kind of mm. hate music companies. But these Dal guys... Dalton had I meme, so I bet he also and, Dalton hates, and I are on the music, same page. Right? But th these guys had this music company where they were, uh, they were um, in Korea, and they were doing like $5,000 a day, um, which, you know, was pretty good. 
and just, they were they were minting money, and, and you know so Hush says, wow, that's really great. So uh, tell us about the you know your your license deals, and there was just a blank stare. Oh, it was all illegal. Uh. <laughs> Like, okay, first so you need to shut that. this down. <laughs> but a lot, I mean, a lot of things. I mean, YouTube started off with blatant copyright infringement too, so you never know. Yeah, but you said no to that one. So on the, you were on the 20 Minute EC podcast recently, and you talked a little bit about how you were, you were interested in the diversity part of things. Is there anything new you want to do with trying to get more diverse founders, not just ju into YC, but applying? Um. You know, I think it's unlikely that the percentage of founders of color and female founders that we have today is sort of the right percentage. I think it's it's way more likely to have to do with well things that we probably can't directly do anything about with how our school systems and our societies are, are set, and our society is set up. Uh, but there are there are also structural things in our industry that we can work. On. Um, I, I don't, again, I've been in this job for two weeks, so excuse me if I don't have all sorts of brilliant ideas as to things we can do about this. But as a company, we actually have made real efforts. We do things like we do office hours that are open specifically to different um, uh, founder segments that, that will hopefully inspire some of them to come in and, 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 and apply to YC and become founders. We've done our female founders conference, and we'll probably continue to do that, I, I, think, I, I, I think we can do more. I don't know precisely what that should be. I'm open to suggestions. But I do think that this is something that not only is, you know, is, is good for the ecosystem, it's good for us. Again, because I think there's, uh, there's great founders <laughs> to be found in, that, in, in, those, in those diverse groups. And, and we would love to help them create the billion dollar companies of the future. We think it's great for us, it's great for them, and it's great for, um, for the United States or whatever country they come from. Are you having a lot of problems with visas? Because I've seen, I'm originally yes. from Toronto, I'm now an American citizen, I've seen a lot of articles about how under Trump, you know, entrepreneurs and, people, and engineers cannot get in and now, and it's actually yeah. benefiting Canada quite a bit. Is that affecting the YC program? Because YC has had entrepreneurs from all over the world, right? Yeah, it's been a real problem. I, I don't have much to say about that, but it, it's 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 so short-sighted, right? The, the, you know, the whole approach towards immigrants. Immigrants make this country so much stronger and so much better. And to have to 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 be so short-sighted is it's painful to see. And yeah, it's a real problem. Yeah, I don't know if I would from, have gotten in today. Yeah. So right. are we out of time, or and do we want to take audience questions or not? There's I'm happy to take questions. Okay, do we have questions from the audience? And is there like a mic or anything? No, so everyone's everybody, tired. It is the end of the day. You guys are probably worn out. too shy to ask a question. Have you guys been going since early in the morning? Are you all worn out? We have a question way back there. Oh. So we're just going through a six months program at Alchemist. And I find that for enterprise software startup, six months is a good time to get feedback. I'm curious how do you manage to get um, that level of feedback in three months? And what do you do to accelerate the learning cycle? I guess I would have to say our feedback is twice as good mm. every time. So uh, we have found that the rhythm of three months is about right, but not always right. Sometimes it's too short. And like I said, sometimes companies aren't ready for a demo day, and they, and they move on. One of the reasons that YC was the first to raise the amount of funding that we got from 20,000 to 100, originally 170, then we moved around a little bit, but it's 150 now, so companies would have, have time if they're not ready to raise funds to do it later. But I'll also point out, we, there's a three-month YC program, but once you're in YC, you're, you stay in YC, and you can continue to do office hours and work with us and talk to us. You, we, the office hour system continues to work. Even after your company dies, you can still get office hours, and now we have a further set of programs. We have a Series A program for companies that get into a Series A, and it's, it's actually, it's, we're actually organizing it in batches now, but we'll also work with you to help you 
help you do your pitch and come up with a strategy for being most effective in raising the Series A from the VCs that are, that are the best fit. And even after that, we have a, we ha not only do we have a fund that will invest in growth stage company, but we have a, a growth program that helps companies go through the, the, the difficult transition of going from a 10-person company to a 50-person to a com company to a 100-person company. So I, I know it's easy to think of we're a three-month program and then we kick you out, but that's not really what happens and that ho hopefully with, with, we're with you all the way. There was a question back there in the, in the black shirt. <coughs> Um, so, I guess, to repeat the question, one was, do, are we seeing a dilution in the quality of the companies and are our investors tired of Demo Day and, uh, uh, and maybe not investing so much? All indications are no. So I'll tell you in five to ten years whether there was a real dilution. We, we have a, a few early indications of whether the quality of companies diminishes over time. One indication is us. Like, do we feel like there's a, a variation or diminution in the quality of the companies and the founders that we funded? And, and, and that is unambiguously no. Um, another indication is, do they raise less money at, at Demo Day, which also answers your second question. The answer is, so far, unambiguously no. Um, a third is, are, are there milestones on the way? Are they, are they achieving less revenue, fewer users, or whatever their key metric is, or even better, are they doing, uh, achieving good Series A's at a lower rate? I don't know for the latest batch that went from 150 to 200 because it takes really 18 months to get your first measure, but for the previous batches, it looks like our Series A rate is remarkably consistent. So it does not look so far that the, that the quality has di been diminished. And there are enough really successful companies from more recent batches to help give us confidence that that that's true. So knock on wood, that, that, that is, that, that is, we're all holding quality. And actually, I think we can expand our programs a lot. Now, I don't know, can we fund 1,000 companies a batch? I kind of doubt that. I, I don't know, though. But I, we have successfully sharded YC without actually going into different cities. We're still only in Mountain View. So can we keep on growing there for a while? I think so. You know, the especially for the software people or people who've grown companies, you know it's really hard to tell what bottleneck you're going to hit until you hit it, and then you try to work around it, and that's kind of what we do. We, we, we will grow until we hit a bottleneck. We will keep on accepting companies that we think are, are you know, Paul, Paul, had a, Paul Graham had a thing. You, you should, we should fund as many sufficiently good companies as we can because it's so hard to tell early on. And so it's... It's kind of like the, the 200th company versus the 220th, 230th. If we can't tell the difference, well, then we, we probably should fund as many of those as we can because who knows, the next Airbnb might just be one of those folks, as long as we believe the quality of the founders is, is high enough. I think we can do I, one more. Okay. I just had a comment for uh, Jeff. I think he did an amazing job in startup um, school last year. Because I, I, I got the rejection email first, and I shut down my company for four hours until I got an acceptance email. So whatever I've learned Thanks. so far has been because of startup school. And um, uh, the mentor I got, Chris, uh, who's the co-founder of Clerky, because of startup school. Chris uh, is awesome. Yeah, because of his help, I was able to close my pre-seed round this week. So thank you so much for that. Awesome. Congratulations. That's good. Thanks. OK. I think that's it, unless you want to do another one. I can do more questions. All right, let's I'm do good. a couple more. That, that guy there had, has been waiting, in the white shirt. Thank you so much. I'm going to make this short. Um, what advice would you give to those who were not accepted in YC? And what healthy patterns do you see in those founders that get into YC? Um, so we have a really low acceptance rate. You know, we get about 12,000 applications per batch, and we accept somewhere between 1% and 2%, depending on, you know, on, on the particular batch. So most founders don't get into YC. However, look, I think it helps you a lot to, to go through YC. I think it improves your probability of success. So I think it's worth trying to go again. And 
the best way to get into YC, we, we accept many founders who, who have been rejected in the past. And so the, then they apply the, again? Yeah, yeah, now, when they it, apply is again. Is it for the same business, the same idea, or is it a different one? It, both, both. Um, Drew Houston was rejected the first time for a, for a test prep company. Dropbox worked out better. And we can argue, we argue with ourselves all the time, should we reject that, or is, is he so great we should just take him? But sometimes it's hard to tell, and it was different back then. And they come back with like a mustache on so you don't recognize them, or a different name. <laughs> oh, it's me again. People have tried everything. The, the, the best is when people apply like with two or three different startups in the same batch, and like they don't tell their co-founders that they're applying with multiple companies. That's pretty funny. Um, loyalty. But the biggest thing we look at, assuming it's the same company, is have you made significant progress? Founders that make progress, that build stuff, and like talk to users, and get more users, and make progress towards product market fit, or find product market fit, those are most likely to get in. So the number one thing is make progress on your company. Keep on building, and keep on doing what you need to do to- Are you especially impressed if they've gotten any other YC startups to use what they're building? Is that, does that count extra? Because obviously, the list of those companies- I, I think if that's the case, and we talk to them, and they give us a good, good reference, it's really good to get YC founders to give you recommendations. It's even better to get YC founders we like to give you <laughs> recommendations, but I can't tell you who in advance that is, so you'll have to figure it out. But, uh, but recommendations are great, so getting YC companies to use your software and think, or whatever your product is, and think it's awesome is a, is a great plan as well. Uh, in general, I would not be too sad that you didn't get into YC. It's hard to get in. Like, Focus on your company and, and make it great. And if you apply again, the, your probability of getting in goes way up. Last one. Here. This is really the last one. Really, mm -hmm. really. Hi. <clears throat> uh, since you mentioned the visa situation, and my experience, my personal experience, uh, aligns with what you said, do you have any advice for people coming from abroad engineers or founders on how to, to come and live in the U.S. and get a work permit? Sorry, I, I, I think I missed the, the crux of I the question. I think he's asking for tips if you are an immigrant founder trying to get into Silicon Valley. You mean for getting a visa or for figuring yeah. that out? Yeah, since you mentioned the situation. <sighs> you know, I, um, I, I wish I did. I think sometimes, we've tried to go through this path. If you get someone in the U.S. Congress to send a note, um, but like I, I had this great this great interplay with this congressman I know, and we're trying to get visas for Indian founders, and and and, and the question you know he, he wasn't answering it, but his guy was answering. It's like so, do they live in his district? I'm like no, they're from India. <laughs> <laughs> so so they have like sort of some restrictions. So, so you can try to do that sort of thing, and sometimes if someone sends a letter, it can help. But I'm sorry, I, I you know getting. Getting um, an, a good immigration attorney involved can sometimes help, but it's, it's, it's fucked up now. And so there's no real good, easy answer. I would say get a good immigration attorney. I have one. Um, and let's hope that uh, you know, we have a, better. Let's hope we have a good outcome in a couple years in, in our election. In the meantime, you know, I guess you can go to Toronto or Vancouver. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to start YC Vancouver. Yeah. It's nice in Vancouver. Well, thanks for waiting. There, for is there a founder in uh, Vancouver opening? Is that what you think about? You know, we have had people who've, who've wanted to do like a founder's den in like, you know, China or all that kind of stuff. I mean, like, obviously our whole thing was having this like one little boutique intimate location. So, you know, th that's, not on our, that's not on our plans. Okay. All right. Thanks, gentlemen. Everyone. Again, sorry to make you wait. No, thank you. It's awesome. Good to see you. Good to see you too.